Hey everyone and welcome. Uh, today I'm excited about the topic. It's mud. And <laughs> it seems like a funny topic, but that's actually one of the questions that I got from you all last week is how to uh, how do I avoid creating mud in my pastel paintings? So I'm going to talk about how we create mud and how we can avoid creating mud um, in this video and I'm going to do a quick demonstration to show you and give you some tips. So first of all, let's start at the beginning. What is mud? Uh, oh, and just make sure we're on the same page. To me, mud in a painting is when your your pastel looks flat or dull or maybe even dirty looking. It just doesn't have that freshness or luminosity that pastel is known for. Um, it just looks kind of icky. It's just not exciting. So sometimes we call this mud. We call this mud when we get this kind of result. But sometimes it's important to know that we want this result. We want a dull, flat, neutralized, maybe ugly color uh, so that our bright, pure, intense colors can really come to life. So when we want to have mud and we need it, we don't call it mud, but what do we call it? We call it neutrals or grays, right? So sometimes we want to create those neutrals and grays, but most of the time when we get muddy looking paintings, it's not because we want them. And so let's talk about how it happens and then what we can do to avoid uh, making this happen. I have an example over here. I want to show you. This is a painting and I've divided it in half. Now on the left side, this is a fresher uh, application of pastel and on the right side this is what we would call a muddy or dirty or dull looking uh, painting and I have created mud on purpose just to show you the difference and how on this side the pastel looks fresh uh, maybe a little bit more luminous a little bit more interesting in color and this just looks all dull and muddy and this is what we want to avoid so how did I create mud how do we typically create mud well, it's important to note that when we create mud, what we're doing is we're actually physically mixing the pastel pigment together. Now, if you think about mixing paint, such as oil paint or acrylic paint, when you physically mix two colors together, you create a new color. So if we mix red and blue together, we come up with a violet. All right, physically mixing colors together. We can do the same thing with pastel. We can physically mix colors together, and that's not a problem, except for when we mix the wrong colors together. And so what happens is when we mix opposites on the color wheel, which would be the complements, or if we mix more than two colors together physically, what will happen is those colors will begin to neutralize themselves, and the, and the colors will start to look grayed, or neutral, or muddy. Now, uh, sometimes we want this to happen. We want to make a duller color, so we mix the opposite, or we mix more than two colors together, and we get a dull color. And I'm going to demonstrate this in just a second. But when we don't want this to happen, we have to avoid that physical blending of the layers. Uh, we want to use a lighter touch. And when we use a lighter touch, what we end up doing is we optically blend the colors. So we can layer many layers of colors on top of one another and not get mud, but if we're using a light enough touch, they don't physically mix, but they optically mix. And we see a new color, even though there's not really a new color there. So I want to demonstrate this. So what I have is I've selected three colors that I'm going to use a, a blue, a red, and a green. I'm going to start off and I'm going to do the raw, I'm going to make mud first of all. So I'm going to, and part of the reason that we get mud is we press down too hard. When we press down too hard, we are um, going to mix things physically because it, we're, we're just pushing too hard and the pigments mixed together. So here's my first layer and let's just say I want to add another layer. I'm going to add red and I'm going to press really hard. All right. So now what I've done is I've used a heavy touch and I cannot see the blue underneath. It's too heavy. Uh, it's not mud yet because I, it's, they're not opposites on the color wheel. So it's just, but you're not getting the enjoyment of the blue and the red. Now I'm going to optically mix these colors. So I'm going to put the blue down. I'm going to use a lighter touch. Okay, I'm not going to press quite as hard. Now I'm going to put the red on top. And again, I'm going to use a much lighter touch. Now in this example, we start to 
kind of see that it's got a purple feeling to it. Our eye optically mixes the two together, and because I still see the blue and I still see the red, I can start to perceive that it's got a little bit of a violet feeling to it. I'm creating a new color optically. In this case, because I press so hard, I can't see the blue anymore and it's not doing anything but it's just looking kind of dull. It's not quite muddy yet, but uh, it's on its way to becoming mud. What if I were to add another color? Now I'm going to add the complement to red, which is green, and I'm going to, again, press down very hard. Now watch, look at what's happening. The blue and the red and the green are mixing together physically and it's definitely got a dull, duller or muddy feeling to it. Now I'm going to take that same green and I'm going to lightly layer it on top of my two colors and I don't get that same muddy feeling. It's a little bit fresher because I'm not uh, mixing those colors together creating a neutral. So. By using a very light touch, you can layer more and get more of an optical blending, which works better than physically blending those layers together. Now there's another thing that we do oftentimes that helps create mud, and again it has to do with physically blending, and that's when we use some sort of blending tool or we over blend with our fingers. Now what happens when we blend with a tool or our fingers, and I'm going to just show you, is we are physically blending those colors together. All right, so if you ever put your finger in the painting and really blended it, you can see I've created a nice dull, grayed down, reddish purple. All right, it's very flat. One thing that I did was I physically mixed the layers together, but I did another thing. I crushed the crystals that are in the pastel pigment. And that's what gives pastel its luminosity. When the light hits those crystals, it just glows with light. But when you crush them with your finger or any kind of tool, it just flattens it and dulls it. So putting my finger in there makes it dull. I can take this, which is not muddy yet, and make it muddy by blending it with my finger or a tool. So now I have another version of mud. So two ways to create mud, physically blending a layer together and crushing the crystals with your finger or a tool. All right. So basically what I'm saying is to use a light touch. If you have a light touch, you have more control over your mixtures. You can create optical blends or physical blends if that's what you want. But a lot of times we have to, we struggle with the touch getting the light touch. So how can I get a light enough touch? I'm going to suggest an exercise for you. So you take a piece of paper and what you're going to do is you're going to take a pastel, put it on its side, and on one side of the paper you're going to press down as hard as you can. And then as you go across the paper you're going to gradually lift up the pressure that you're applying until you get to the very end of the paper and you're just whispering that pastel on the surface. Let's do it again. Press down hard and then start to release the pressure. And try to get a gradation of value from dark and heavy to a very light touch. Press down, start to pick up on your pressure, release the pressure till you just barely whisper. And when you're whispering, then you know you have a light touch. When you press down too hard, you're shouting, and you don't have as much control, and it's very easy to make mud. So, in conclusion, you can make mud by physically blending pastel layers together. So you want to avoid pressing too hard, and you want to avoid blending, unless of course your goal is to get that muddy or dull or neutralized color. So the right touch is a light touch, and I'm going to encourage you to do this exercise so that you can get an idea of how much pressure it takes to give yourself a light touch. So I hope this helped answer some questions about creating and avoiding mud.